Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nesha, and this is another episode of Swine Radio. Uh, it has been a long while since I did the episode of Swine Radio. I really don't know why. Uh, you, often you can actually listen at my pod gaming series. It's working as the way, same way as Swine Radio, with the difference that I am playing Tom Raider in the background. Yeah, and uh, of course uh, we have Swine with us here, but he is just threatening me in the background, you know quietly silently he's trying not to oh shit i'm I'm telling too much okay let's uh calm down here yeah so i thought it was time for another episode of swine radio because it was a long time ago and uh, when i was listening at my friends president barani uh, at uh, their channel they have their uh, random ramble almost every week Uh, i really recommend it it is a very fun show uh, about everything and nothing yeah so uh, and uh, Barani said something very uh, something that really um, uh, resonated with my uh, kind of thinking, and uh, that was just to find my voice. And I think I'm I come so far on the channel uh, that I'm uh, I had in video uh, making and so on. But the thing I really want to do is uh, develop my voice uh, into a more instrument and. I think I need a more dramatic voice. Uh, I'm trying it out here. I'm trying. I think I'm gonna slow down a little bit uh, of my uh, speak, speech speech impact run uh, and uh, just find my voice and uh, try to express more what I'm feeling in a, a moment. Often uh, my feelings are uh, hidden below a layer of something. <laughs> so if I can somehow penetrate my own layer of uh, something, and that is, uh, so I can show more in my voice uh, who I am and uh, what I want and what I'm saying or my humor or something. That's really a thing I really want to do. So practice my voice and find my own voice. Uh, that's 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 probably key. Uh, I sometimes find my voice when I'm playing and, uh, and doing my video content, and, and it's and often the thing that there is has in common when I really feel like I, I reach out to my viewers is when I'm very immersed in what I'm doing, and uh, sometimes I overthink it, and then I I think I become distant. I'm bad analyze uh, of something. It's always hard. I'm f- probably overthinking this. Yeah, after all, this is a gaming channel, so uh, I thought about, oh man, what uh, are the upcoming games in 2016 that really is on my radar? And uh, I, I made a small list here, and uh, I, I'm, it's, so far uh, there aren't many games that really um, speaks to my uh, and really uh, attract me. Uh, I think the biggest game for me uh, in this coming year will be XCOM. Uh, I really enjoyed the first XCOM and I did a series on my channel on and then. And that's a, that's a game that I spend a lot of time with. And of course, there are two uh, uh, Square Enix uh, published games like the There's the Human Kind Divide and the Hitman game. Yeah, so let us let me speak a little bit about Hitman game. I have followed this and tried to stay not to watch all the trailers, you know. Uh, they always try to hype you up and uh, if I don't watch the marketing material, uh, I think I can have a more distant view and uh, I can uh, more go after what I think when I'm reading and so on. I'm uh, trying not to read up on so much because there are some much marketing, and the marketing is actually proven uh, to work. Otherwise, they wouldn't spend millions of dollars on marketing if it didn't work. But you must remember that the marketing is like you have a friend uh, that is really hi- hyped about something and really pr- proud about something, and and he 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 is very excited about the thing that's happening, and that's a that's a marketing, and it's a. It's not a, a fair uh, assessment of what is upcoming. It's more like, oh, this is all the things we are proud of. And uh, it's almost like a baby. You always say, oh, my baby uh, can do better things. Uh, he, he, he learned to walk uh, before all the other babies. And, uh, and that's kind of marketing. They are Their parents uh, have their own show where they are very proud of their own. Uh, creation and uh, yeah and that's marketing for me so I try to stay out of marketing that's a strategy I often follow 
because uh, you can't really analyze this, uh, some uh, marketing as like d- dislike something and like bragging and it doesn't give you uh, a fair view because uh, it's not that uh, I need to hear, hear negative things but uh, somehow in development uh, they often overstate uh, well, there are things and things. A good example for uh, um, we speak in history here uh, when Oblivion was uh, before it was released. Uh, uh, they said I did uh, these bragging videos how uh, complicated the AI was in Oblivion, and they had uh, this demonstration video where uh, the emphasis uh, actually was uh, a lot more advanced than they uh, was ever gonna be in the upcoming Oblivion. Uh, they had this. Um, video where you saw an embassy going on his schedule eating and he was actually hunting out he uh, had a little dog that he scared off uh, from the bed when it was closed and then, and then that embassy went on uh, practicing arrows because uh, they in the, the beta stage of the game uh, they actually had uh, a lot uh, more unshackled AI so they was training and they had skills that they trained themselves uh, actually the embassies but nothing of this reached the uh, game in uh, <laughs> in the final product but people were so fucking hy- hyped about it and even me and uh, but I was sort of skeptical or I remember my friend oh man this is gonna be the fucking greatest game in ever uh, it's like everyone is in this world is living in hostel or aspirations and so on but I was, uh, you, you know, uh, that's just uh, a tech demo, you know, that's what they can do, but uh, it won't be possible to do because it will be too complex to render a world where everyone has their own wishes and uh, are, uh, yeah, and uh, it really turned out, uh, and after that I never seen uh, a of bra- brag about the AI and, and another uh, guy that also, uh, Petr Molonik, Molonik, is that his name, I can't even pronounce it. The old uh, Lion Head Studio uh, head, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, he he always liked to give Hitman, uh, sorry, the Fable games a lot, and uh, that was uh, he's famous for it. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's how I think about marketing. And, and one of the things that um, really I feel with a Hitman game, uh, I'm not sure if uh, uh, releasing Hitman game in episode will be uh, ni- uh, good or nice because. There is always uh, the pro of when you're releasing the games in part, they can actually uh, listen to feedback from users um, and uh, improve the game to the next episode. So that's the good part of it. But I'm thinking, I really, I really, uh, uh, I would wait until Hitman is released with all their their episodes. Uh, I don't really want to play a level and wait a month for playing in another level. I really want to play my games from beginning to the end and if I have to spread it out over a year I know I will lose interest because I will have forgotten what I played in early levels. And it's not always a good thing with gamers and users can interact with the games and so on. A good example is TV series. Uh, I follow. I, I watch a lot of TV series, and and you can really see where the viewers have actually destroyed the series because they want something, and uh, the the makers of series they listen uh, at the viewers, and sometimes it really doesn't work because uh, they are just trying to please the viewers. It's like a fan service, and. Uh, it really doesn't work because uh, they want things that are not uh, actually. Uh, they want to see things that they actually want, don't want to see because when they, have, when they do it, it doesn't work. Because and uh, yeah, I'm afraid about episode or Hitman. Maybe they will uh, uh, go from. Uh, maybe they will leave the core of Hitman. That's my uh, the f- good thing about when you're doing a whole game in one uh, go uh, is that they have a vision and uh, they're completing that vision and uh, it's not gonna change over time because they have already released the product but uh, in an episode where uh, the game maybe will change uh, its whole core uh, over the year because people want that and I'm just afraid that Hitman will turn out uh, weird maybe won't be a hitman game when they have released all the episodes because 
they are going to try if they have episode and uh, and people don't like it they were going to start uh, listening on their uh, gamers and try to please them and uh, that will be their main objective so they can sell more episodes in the future so they're going to try to listen to the gamers and and I think the gamers going to destroy Hitman I don't uh, I don't trust uh, game companies but I trust internet people uh, even less because in internet, if you're gonna, if they're gonna listen to feedback, you know, feedback is always there. Please, people often doesn't say a shit. They don't say anything. Uh, they don't. Uh, it's very rarely to say see on a gaming forum. Oh man, I love this game, uh, uh, Fred. Oh, I love this game. This is the best game I ever played, and this is why I love this game. That's what like one topic of hundred, but if you're looking on a, a gaming for you will always see the negative feedback. And uh, and uh, I think it's uh, as important to listen to people that are positive about things because uh, they represent a big part of the quiet mass that because if you're angry about something, you really want to express something. If you really like something, you often just please and you shut up. You don't say, say anything. And uh, that's just how a human wants. If you like your work, you don't go to work and say to your uh, work uh, uh, colleagues, yeah, oh, I really love this work. You don't say that every day. But if you are pl- not pleased with something, uh, you will fucking make your voice heard. As a, 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 you will make your voice heard. To everyone that wants to listen at you, so you're gonna say, "Oh, fucking, I hate this work. Huh? I don't like how we do that." And uh, yeah, negative feedback is very good. Also, Con- uh, constructive criti- uh, critics is also important. But uh, we humans, uh, I think, we concentrate more on the negative aspect of things and. Uh, sometimes uh, you must remember that uh, negative things is like uh, just as personal uh, like you like something for example if you have a girlfriend uh, you probably like your girlfriend and you think she looks uh, very nice but your friend maybe f- think your girlfriend is a naked bitch that looks like a, tr- a traffic accident in her head or on her face but uh, they won't say that because then you will fucking kill them and do it to your girlfriend. But you, you, you get my point. Uh, it's a, it, it's a hard, it, it can be a very dangerous thing uh, to just li- listen on negative people and uh, negative feedback. And that's good. that will always on the internet when you can make your voice heard anonymously. Uh, you don't have to back up your world with your own uh, uh, persona, your own person. It's very easy to be negative because you don't have to uh, explain yourself. You don't have to, uh, if you were whining, and uh, you can whine and behind your keyboard. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, but I will not judge this. This is a new concept. Maybe, um, maybe the Hitman Man, uh, Hitman Man, <laughs> uh, will do a great game. I don't know, but I, I will follow the development of uh, Hitman uh, in behind and see what the fuck is going on and how it's going to work. Uh, yeah, XCOM. I, I also have uh, stayed in the dark about that game because I trust them uh, to make a great game. I don't uh, need marketing to know that uh, they will actually do a great game. They. Uh, what I've seen from the Twitter account that I'm following, it looks very uh, nice and, and they are building on that cool function in XCOM where you personalize uh, your soldiers and they are building on that and that's one of the things that uh, is making that game so great. So uh, I believe they can uh, manage to do a great product. I've, I've actually trust them and uh, hopefully they will not betray that trust for us. And of course, another Square Enix product that is on my radar is Deus Ex Humankind Divided. And uh, I haven't fallen that, but I, I believe that can be a great game also. Uh, maybe I would play in... I feel like these games, uh, the Square Enix games, uh, Hitman and Deus Ex, uh, I will probably buy them late. I, I, I feel no rush for it. It's the same on XCOM. Uh, I think I'm gonna... Uh, just skip it for a while until it uh, comes on the first the sale and that's my strategy buying games. Uh, also we have a mirror search approaching uh, also and uh, they're gonna do this open world once again a choice uh, that I really think can hurt uh, the uh, game, uh, mirror search game because I yes right now I'm playing mirror search on my channel and 
one of the things that uh, Mirror's Edge uh, has done very well uh, as a it's a very well designed game in level design and I think this is so important for a good game to have good level design and one of the pros of, of not using an open world uh, concept is that you can push uh, you can really push the limit and design very well the design levels but uh, if you have to do it on a scale <laughs> of a small city, it will never uh, be as uh, uh, well designed as a small part of the city, you know, if you are just uh, concentrated on a neighborhood, uh, uh, on a level, on a neighborhood basis in a city, that w- uh, neighborhood will be so much more well designed than a neighborhood in a big open world game. And also, uh, I don't really. If, uh, I think I, I, I think they will go. Uh, I don't think Mirror Search will be Mirror Search any longer. It will be uh, an open world where you can do parkour, but I don't think they can uh, make uh, Mirror Search so that works like the old game and what makes this old game popular. They are selling into open world again and. I was afraid here the Hitman guy is going to gonna do the same, but they are just using a marketing language, and I checked it up. Uh, they are <laughs> calling it as often, but just so you can say that Hitman is open world, is open world scaled leveled, uh, not an open world game. So thank you, otherwise the Hitman game. Uh, 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 missions in a big city, no please. The Hitman game, uh, all the Hitman games will with this exception, uh, Absolution has been mission-based game and uh, there have been very well-designed missions and uh, and they have traveled all the world. Uh, Absolution was uh, different in that way because it took place in America all the game uh, so they, they, that's actually a game but they are telling they, uh, they, the marketing has listened to their Hitman fans and they are telling that it will be more like a blood money and if that's if that is true uh, i will be positive <laughs> about hitman because that is probably my favorite hitman game blood money actually and uh, let's talk about a little bit about pc gaming and now when i'm uh, turn into a pc gaming uh, uh, man again uh, with uh, my screen attached to my face i'm starting to care that's that's one of the drawbacks and uh, pros of PC. Uh, you have the screen attached to your face, and you can change uh, how those pixels look while you are, are, are you are actually watching pixels. And uh, even if I'm uh, playing in 720p on my uh, TV, I, I don't care about the pixels. But so you, I'm li- I'm becoming a little bit obsessed <coughs> of the <coughs> tweaking. <coughs> Oh my fucking god! I need the coffee. <clears throat> I go in. I become a little bit obsessed about the pixels, and it's fun to tweak the games. Oh man! <clears throat> I need. I should have put took water instead of coffee. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Like I was saying, I'm becoming a little bit obsessed about the. Pixels on the screen, it's very fun to tweak the game. Mirror's Edge uh, was even. F- Mirror's X was a good example because uh, they had this in the file and this is uh, done on Unreal Engine. And you, you have more or less freedom uh, to tweak the whole game engine, how it uh, renders the game. And uh, that was really fun. I tweeted shit out of that game and. <laughs> I made it look like a modern game because you can do all about, uh, you can even change the complex- complexity of the characters, how they are rendering and so on. And I could check and uh, do a lot of things in that thing. And when my uh, screen is attached to my face, uh, it's really nice to see it. But it, 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 when I was watching it on the TV, it was. <laughs> It's a, a bit overkill. I, I didn't. Re- the game doesn't really need, uh, and I think that's one of the drawbacks of using a monitor attached to your face. You're sitting so close to your monitor, so you are always watching those pixels, uh, uh, and that's one of the f- good thing about console because you can't change anything, so you concentrate more on just uh, the gameplay uh, experience. I developed also when I'm playing PC games, but. Uh, I kind of have this uh, new uh, step when I'm playing a PC game. 
I spend almost half an hour just tweaking uh, the graphics and often I tweak it on a driver level because there, uh, I have a Nvidia 960 uh, uh, graphic card and uh, Nvidia have, uh, the, somewhere has made this a cool, very cool uh, software that is called Nvidia Inspector and with this you can actually uh, go into the driver level and change a lot uh, that uh, you're not supposed to be able to change. Uh, like I can uh, change what anti-alias technique they use and I can add, uh, for example, uh, shadows, uh, HBAO, uh, uh, that adds shadows uh, to darker areas and uh, I can tweak a lot. So uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time doing that. It's fun actually, but uh, it's not really needed. But it's only needed because my screen is attached to my face. Because uh, if I was playing for my uh, most of the changes I do uh, uh, really do uh, doesn't make a difference when I'm playing on my TV because I can't see the difference. It's uh, like anti-alias uh, techniques. I can really not only see it when I'm uh, uh, sitting from from my PC with my screen attached to my face. Uh, uh, then I can see the difference, but if I'm uh, playing from my TV, it's really not re really important any longer. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, and, and now I understand. Uh, I didn't understand why PC people are always obsessed so much about graphics, and I think it's just because you can change so much of the graphic. You can see I change how things are rendering, and uh, as a console man. I couldn't really change how the game uh, looked, so you uh, either you accepted it, uh, you just accepted the game in that state it was delivered to you. But in the uh, PC, you can always uh, pull back more, and uh, it's a good thing. Uh, I've I'm mostly because I really want to tweak. I, I'm I'm not so much uh, into tweaking myself uh, for my own uh, amusement. I really do it because I really want uh, the videos to look good when people are watching in that and that things it feels cool because I can uh, make my rendering uh, so people on that are watching my videos can see uh, the games uh, from a very tweaked state uh, and uh, they can see a very beautiful game because I can uh, make it uh, look better uh, for my viewers and that is why I'm always tweaking because I really want the videos to look good for my viewers. Uh, that's what I care about mostly, so that's why I uh, tweak a lot also. That's what is motivating me to tweak a lot. If I'm just playing for my own my amusement, I really don't really care actually. <laughs> or little, because my screen is attached to my face. I said that before because I have uh, taken out, uh, so spoken, spoken about why PC people are so obsessed with graphic. And, I didn't understand it before I started doing PC gaming again, uh, and now I understand it. It's just like I said, if you have the fucking screen attached to your face, you will see every fucking flaw in the game, and uh, yeah, and if you can change that, you will do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing Thief on my channel also. <clears throat> oh shit, my voice. I'm playing FIFA on my channel also. It is interesting to play from a game from 1998 because uh, one of the things that hasn't really... Uh, it was uh, when computers start, started to actually become uh, more powerful, so you could do some bigger things. And this is one of these games that suffered from it because the levels are so big, so you, uh, I spent one and a half hour on one level just lost in a big house and the house was like uh, a size of uh, a big uh, shopping mall or bigger than a shopping mall, uh, just a little house that you ran around and just because they could do uh, such large levels uh, they did it and a, a very good example, I look it up because of one of the crazy games and this is for 1994 I believe uh, uh, Daggerfall, the second Elder Scroll game. Uh, Elder Scroll games uh, is like Skyrim, Oblivion. It's the more newer versions of this, and and in and, uh, and <laughs> Daggerfall they had uh, 750,000 embassies in the game, and 15,000 uh, cities. Uh, and the game was not better world uh, because of that. And that, that was what was happening when. The, computers have become too powerful, uh, uh, they started to uh, make thing, everything larger and grander and things and uh, 
that's really uh, so the gameplay is after uh, the, I remember Dog Daggerfall and I was uh, I, I got tired of it because you can run forever and it feels you didn't feel any connection to the game or any and uh, the, the, that was the thing and I'm feeling that we are in that stage again uh, with this overworld everyone is trying to big, build bigger than bigger and bigger open world uh, g- uh, places to run around in and it's not always better with bigger and larger uh, a good example is Daggerfall and I think we are in the technology right now that we can build this extremely huge worlds that is not uh, it, it always doesn't benefit us uh, I think uh, a game that uh, strike a good balance with this uh, was the Fallout games uh, it's, uh, especially in the fourth Fallout game I played uh, uh, it, it was but then you have this uh, everyone fucking uh, it's, a, it's a kind of, of, of overload of uh, things to do and overlord what everything and for gossip you never when you play fallout or you can't can you even walk five minutes in the open world without uh, uh you you never you're never alone you know you always have you always bump into enemies or something in every you walk in two three minutes and then it's next enemies and uh it's uh, i think it's too crowded i i really would enjoy uh, just uh, walking uh, through an area where there aren't so much uh, things that are distracting you and uh, you can explore things. It's like overcrowded. Uh, I I think uh, they really should put in more uh, things that are not hostile, like uh, bunnies or something (laughs) that jumps around. And uh, there there is some rad stacks in Fallout 4 uh, and so on. So there are are, uh, on Brahim, but it's, uh, it's, uh, we are at that stage that uh, everyone is competing about building the most complex open world and large and uh, I think we could benefit even more about building more things and uh, like Fallout 4 I know it should be a wasteland but there aren't many places uh, I think I thought it was Diamond City was a disappointment. Uh, the biggest, largest uh, city uh, is there, uh, and I really didn't like it. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the best uh, Fallout city in the Fallout series, in the modern Fallout series, was New Vegas in Fallout New Vegas. I really liked New Vegas city with uh, casinos and stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe Oblivion, uh, uh, oh, what do they call? Oh, Oblivion is the game, but oh man, I forgot what it, the other guys that uh, uh, <laughs> say that I love to uh, tweak the game. And I hope uh, I look forward if they for the, can do a new New Vegas uh, uh, or a, if it, a Fallout 4.5 uh, version because I really enjoy their. Uh, I really enjoy how they made things uh, with Fallout, yeah. And. Uh, I don't really have so much more to say. Uh, I'm de- um, I, I think I will go back to doing more swine radio uh, again because, uh, like I said, told in the beginning of this recording, I really want um, to practice my voice and uh, speak, uh, try to express my feelings f- with my voice. And uh, I think uh, this is a good medium to practice on, so I will do this. Uh, so, but. Uh, what will happen with Swine Radio? Is it gonna be more like uh, my friends and Fred and Barney? It would be more like I speak w- about what I'm having on my mind right now. It could be everything. Well, and, and I will finish with show today with an uh, interesting thing. My father does this. Uh, he researching his relative in Sweden. We call it like uh, family uh, research or family, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you research your family, and he has like 10,000 or I think it's 20,000 relatives through the ages, and he has worked on this for 10 years. So I, t- I asked my father, Can't you uh, put out uh, my uh, this, uh, what kind of background I am and uh, w- w- how much Swedish I am? And it's actually quite interesting. Uh, I'm uh, 24.96 Swedish. I'm 18.75% uh, German. I'm 3.12% uh, uh, Same. It's like the native people of Sweden. And I'm 53% uh, 
finish and and uh, uh, zero point sorry zero five uh, Dutch. <laughs> so that's my excuse. So I'm more Finnish than Swedish. And uh, if you rank it, I'm more uh, I'm a Finnish. Uh, Swedish and German that's my biggest part so that's my mix I thought that was interesting yeah let's finish with that and as always thank you for listening